a country that was opposed to our liberation, a country that supported colonial regimes, the apartheid regime in South Africa, the white racist minority regime in Zimbabwe, now Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, the Portuguese colonial governments in Mozambique, in Angola, in Guinea-Bissau, and Cape Verde. Today is coming to Africa to teach us about democracy. A country that has toppled so many governments in Africa, that has led so many coups in Africa and other parts of the world, a country that has killed so many of our leaders in Africa and other parts of the world, the killers of Patis Rumumba, those who top toppled Kwame Nkrumah, those who killed Nasser, those who killed Muammar Gaddafi, today are coming to teach us about democracy. A country that has been built on a brutal force, on enslavement of other human beings, on the humiliation of Africans, the exploitation of Africans, the plunder of Africa, today is coming to teach us about democracy. That's the arrogance, the imperialist arrogance, the racist arrogance that we are subjected to. We cannot have democracy where there is hegemony of the strongest, mightiest imperialist power. We cannot have democracy where a country's resources, a country's decisions are dictated to by another country. A country that is dominated by another country cannot be democratic. A country that lacks sovereignty cannot be democratic. A people that cannot decide for themselves cannot be democratic. A colony, a new colony, cannot be democratic. That's why today, even at the United Nations, membership is on the basis of sovereignty. Only sovereign nations can be members of the United Nations. Because only sovereign nations can decide for themselves. A colony cannot be a member of the United Nations. It's not by accident. It's not a mistake. If you have no respect for the dignity of others, if you have no respect for the sovereignty of other countries, you cannot claim to be a champion of democracy. They used to say all roads lead to Rome. Today we can confidently say all roads to progress, all roads to what is better for humanity leads to Beijing. This is a country, this is a people that has developed themselves, that has developed itself without colonizing any country in the world, without plundering any country in the world without subjugating any people in the world. This is a country that is developing with maximum respect for others, for their history, for their cultures, and recognizes the diversity that is there in civilization. We were only taught one form of civilization, one form of modernization. That was the Western way. 
Westernness, Westernness was a measure of how civilized, how modern you are. We reject that. We reject it because it's not correct. We reject it because it's undemocratic. We reject it because it's uncivilized to think the, of, of the world and of other people in that way. Today they cannot accept the fact that China has caught up with them. China is about to surpass them in many areas of human endeavor. The imperialist arrogance is inhibiting them from accepting that is reality. The racist arrogance is inhibiting them from accepting that reality. But the world is changing. The changes we are witnessing today, as President Xi said in Moscow recently, or the, day, the other day, they have never been seen in 100 years. They have shaped a world that they themselves today are scared of. And they have shaped a world that is not sustainable. Democracy, human development is not sustainable on the basis of plunder, on the basis of enslavement, on the basis of humiliating other people every day. That is a system we are seeing today, a system that will not survive if plunder is eliminated, if subjugation of other peoples, other nations is eliminated, if inequality in the world is eliminated, that system will disappear. The only system that you can survive and can endure for long is a system that is based on mutual benefit, win-win relationships, mutual respect for others, accommodation and tolerance of others, and fraternal love for all humanity. This is what we find in China today. This is what China's example is showing us. Indeed, all paths are different. There is no path that is the same, even if they are leading to the same destination. Each path has got its own characteristics. We are, being, we are seeing that, we are learning that, we are experiencing that today with China. There are many things that need to be done.